Hello there. So you're gonna be in the car with me for a few minutes because I'm just a very busy person. I just got my car serviced and they've told me that it's gonna cost a bazillion, bazillion pounds to get all the stuff done that needs to be done in it, which is very frustrating, but I do have a confession to make. And I guess a part of the reason why I'm recording this in the car is because I just, I just don't wanna make eye contact with you guys because I feel like a fake and a fraud and a phony. So I have been doing spooky podcasts, spooky podcasts, spooky podcast singular for three years. And I feel like I've been living a lie. Um, and I know what I'm gonna say is gonna really disappoint people, but I'm just gonna, it's time to come clean and make the confession. And that is that I have, I've never carved a pumpkin at Halloween, okay? I've said it there, there's no going back. I've said, it just never came up in my life. It was never something I wanted to do, never something I needed to do. And I'm sorry, but at least it's out there now and I feel like I can breathe easier and sleep at night time knowing that you guys know. But I've never carved a pumpkin. Okay, and I know there's gonna be some people who are watching this and they're gonna be swooning. They're gonna be fainting, get the smelling salts out. But genuinely, I have never carved a pumpkin. And today, that's gonna to change. So not only am I going to go on the long haul, the trek to Sainsbury's to buy a pumpkin, but I'm also going to carve said pumpkin and tell you the myth and legend of the jack-o'-lantern. So here she is, my ginormous pumpkin. It's actually so heavy. It is so heavy. I was alarmed at how heavy pumpkins were and then I had to carry it home, which already puts this video off on not a very good start. So here's the thing, right? Like I said in the intro, I've never in my life carved a pumpkin and I decided for the purpose of this video, I wouldn't look it up. I wouldn't try and see how you do carve a pumpkin. I have a vague idea that you like lop the head off, gouge its eyes out, take out its inside, that kind of thing. But I'm not entirely sure how this is gonna go. And I'm a really firm believer in the art of starting something, immediately regretting it and realizing that you're not gonna be very good at it first time round, and then abandoning it completely and pretending that it never happened. That's generally how I live my life. So uh, this might be interesting. So my tools for today, very important. I have a variety of knives of varying degrees of bluntness. I have a big spoon for scooping out insides. I have a smaller spoon, just in case. I had a thought the other night when I was in bed and it was a very strange thing to be thinking about when you're in bed, but I was just lying there thinking about how many pumpkin related injuries there are every year and whether or not nurses, doctors, healthcare professionals are ready for the great pumpkin injury influx every year. I bet you there's loads. And to be honest, when I was coming out here with the pumpkin, my mom did say, please don't injure yourself. So she already foresees that this is not going to go very well. And the first thing that I'm going to do, I've shown you my equipment, I've shown you my giant pumpkin, not a euphemism. I am going to draw the type of face that I want to have on my pumpkin. I brought a permanent marker in order to do so, and I'm gonna go for a traditional easy pumpkin face. Okay, I've never done this before. We're not gonna run before we can walk. We're just, just gonna go for something basic and simple, okay? So I've drawn my basic pumpkin outline. It's not a work of art, okay? I'm not Da Vinci over here, but I am going to carve this pumpkin and it's going to be incredible, but I'm not entirely sure how to lop the head off first. Have I done his eyes too close to his head? Should I have lopped the head off first? 
I know all you pumpkin connoisseurs are out there like screaming, going, just Google it, but I'm not going to do that. I'm also going to destroy this tablecloth when I lop his head off. So let's do it. Do I like put him sideways to lop his head off? Like, I don't actually know how to do this. I've never handled a vegetable this big. Uh, I'm going to go for my trusty, which is actually a bread knife, because uh, I kind of feel like I need to get a bit of grip. Do I just, or do I go for, I think I'm going to go for a smaller knife. And uh, I'm just going to create an incision. This is what surgeons must feel like when this this is actually what surgeons must feel like when they're doing surgery for real well i got the head off i did not know what the inside of a pumpkin looked like i don't know what i was expecting like i brought a plastic bag expecting the whole thing inside to just be like pulpy mushiness i mean it kind of is but it kind of isn't i'm going to show you a close-up of a uh, the top of it. This is what the top of it looks like. Wild. And then this is what the inside looks like. So presumably, I would imagine I've got to scoop all this stuff out. Oh, it feels really weird. Oh, oh, it feels veiny. Oh no, no, no. No, I don't, whoa, what's that? This is like House of Horror stuff. Stop. Oh, God. I just got to tell you all that this is incredibly boring. Like, I don't know if I, whether I thought it was going to be a laugh a minute. Or I don't know whether a part of me wondered how I'd feel about scooping something's insides out. And uh, none of this is good fun. Feels gross. Like my hands are gross and slimy. I know there's going to be people going, there is a really simple and obvious way to do this. But um, like I said, I'm a great firm believer in just getting stuck into things and then immediately regretting it, which is how I feel right now. yet I've only done his insides and I've done a pretty half arse job of that because it's just so tedious my brain is not designed to do to do tasks like that I just can't do it my brain just goes let's just leave let's just go and do something else but now as a reward I get to gouge his eyes out and I've definitely done his eyeballs too close to the top of his head so you know what? We're just going to go for it. I'm just going to go for it. I got to clean off this little knife first because it's so slippy. I actually, you know, much and as I was joking about hospital admissions earlier, I don't want to have to go to the hospital because of a pumpkin related incident. And speaking of pumpkin related incidents, when I uh, was talking to my mom about this earlier and I said, oh, I've got to go get a pumpkin. She um she was like, why? And I said, oh, I've got to do a, uh, probably this is, I mean, this is perilous. I uh, said, I have got to do a video. And uh, she responded with an OnlyFans video, which admittedly was a very funny joke. It was like, it really, it really tickled me. But it also, I did also think, what the heck do you think I'm going to be doing on OnlyFans with a pumpkin? Now, let that seep into your brain. Because I didn't know either. Oh, this is not going well. This knife is too big. How do I do it? Like, should I have done it with a scissors? I don't know if... keep slipping too which is really not a good thing 
Right, I'm going to concentrate and do this, uh, and do these eyes, and hopefully voice over me will uh, provide some form of entertainment. So while past me is desperately trying not to stab herself while carving a pumpkin with a knife that is probably far too big for the task at hand, I'm going to tell you a little bit about where the legend of the jack-o'-lantern originates. And its origins can be found deep in the annals of Irish myth and lore with the legend of Stingy Jack. Stingy Jack was an awful man. He was a liar, he was a thief, he was a drunk, and, like his name suggests, he was pretty miserly. One night while he was wandering the roads, Stingy Jack came face to face with the devil himself, and rather than being frightened by this, Stingy Jack decided to take the opportunity to invite Old Nick for a drink. They had their drink, but true to his name, Stingy Jack decided that he wasn't going to pay for the drink. I did it! I did it! I did an eye! Pretty cute! Look at that eye! The eye did that! I did it! Very proud of myself. Oh, now I've got to do another one. Oh, and I've got to do the mouth. Oh, God. Okay, voice over me. It's time to take over. Somehow, he tricked the devil into turning himself into a coin. And when the devil did this, Stingy Jack grabbed the coin, shoved it into his pocket right next to a silver cross, which meant that the devil couldn't transform back into his normal self. Stingy Jack would only let the devil free, under the condition that he would not bother Jack for one year, and if Jack died, he wouldn't claim his soul. The devil saw no way out of his predicament, and reluctantly agreed. Look, he's got two eyes! I'm so impressed with myself. I also am very aware that I'm going to watch this back. And when I watch it back, I'm going to be like, why didn't you just do it this way? Well, I didn't, future me, okay? And so Stingy Jack continued with his life. And exactly one year later, he came face to face with the devil again. And this time... Stingy Jack tricked the devil into climbing a tree to pick an apple. While he was up in the tree, Jack quickly carved the sign of the cross into the bark of the tree, so the devil couldn't come down. And again, the devil was left with no option but to strike a deal with Jack. The devil promised not to bother Jack for ten more years. So I have realised that I have a small problem, and that small problem is that I drew the teeth lines in, in permanent marker. So I don't think I'm going to be able to get those bad boys out. But we, we persist, we prevail, we keep going. And I do think as well, I think that I should have made the, uh, I should have done more scooping basically. The scooping seems to be a pivotal part actually because the thicker the wall of the pumpkin is on the inside obviously the harder it is to carve it and i think i have given myself a serious disadvantage by not just persisting with the scooping um and, and that rushing to get things done is a theme in my life you know, I've kind of learned to accept it. Uh, I would have thought that the art of making pumpkins would have changed to like accommodate people like me who just like to do things half-arsed and hope that they work out well, but apparently not. Apparently not. Okay, we're getting there. We're getting there with the mouth. But Jack didn't survive 10 more years. He died pretty soon afterwards. And the legend goes that when he went to heaven, St. Peter wouldn't allow him through the pearly gates and he was sent down to hell. Except 
he couldn't go to hell because him and the devil had made a deal. So the devil took great delight in telling Stingy Jack that he was doomed to wander the earth forever. Jack screamed and cried and begged for some sort of light to guide his way while he was wandering. The devil gave him an ember straight from the depths of hell which Jack dropped into a hollowed out turnip. And then he started his new existence, wandering the earth, tormenting the living. Irish families would hollow out turnips and carve gruesome faces into them. They would light the turnips with a single candle in the hope that the grotesque faces and the light would confuse and frighten Jack and keep him away from their souls over Halloween. And there are those that say on the darkest of Halloween nights, if you look carefully enough, if you don't light your candles, you will see the bobbing lantern making its way towards your house. So the basic pumpkin is done! I'm actually, to be honest, for a first try, I am pretty pleased with my basic pumpkin. Like, look at him! Look at his face! I know he's got permanent marker teeth, but you can't win them all, kiddo. I used to have terrible teeth too. And then I paid to get them fixed. So what I might do, and I think if I had, like, if I had black acrylic paint, I would probably black acrylic paint the inside of his eyeballs, as in that shady that huge chunk of pumpkin that I decided to leave over, I would probably, I would probably color that in, but I'm not gonna do that now. And that permanent marker is not gonna come off his teeth, but I am very proud of him. Like I, this is my child. I made him. He's lovely. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. Yes, I know. I know I'm haphazard. There were probably much safer ways to carve a pumpkin, but maybe next year I'll do some sort of freaky design. I don't know how these people make pumpkins that have like amazing designs and stuff on them. I just don't understand how they do it. But for now, I'm very pleased with my very basic pumpkin. And I hope that you enjoyed the brief history of the jack-o'-lantern, where it came from and its roots in Irish mythology. And I will see you in the next video.